Welcome back, everybody, to the Rusty Tub. Today we're doing an interview with Locke Zilla wearing the Wyvern suit. Locke is the second or third most progressed player on the server, and he's specialized in abusing basic technologies to do super mega awesome things. I uh, used a lot of Locke's infrastructure to get take care of my magic stuff. He was well ahead of the pack, and he was known amongst the young ones as the infamous Blood Lord. And they went running into the mountains to, to, to hide from him. <laughs> I've been gaming with Locke for a long time, and uh, today we're going to get his view of time here on the Minecraft Rusty Tub server. Locke, what was your first few days like? What were some of the things that you wanted to get done? And why did you pick the place that you moved into? Uh, I just kind of took a cardinal direction from where I found Derm's base and said, all right, let me head in that direction and find uh, the first uh, semi-close space that looked like a good base to start out. And I knew I didn't want to go uh, like what I did last server, which was I think I went like 2,000 or 5,000 meters away from the spawn. I knew I didn't want to do that. So why why <laughs> is that? Why didn't you? We can head over there while you tell me. Why didn't you want to go so far away this time? Um, I think last time I, I like I got severely um, like segregated. Like I didn't I didn't First of all, it was my first server too, so I didn't like know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be able to leverage more community efforts if possible. Excellent. And so you picked this little peninsula here. Yes, it was just a, a you know a little hill, a little mound on the edge of the water, and I thought it looked good. In fact, I wasn't even sure if it was going to be my final base. I ended up just putting a little hut there. Mm -hmm. I think I made it here the first night and put a little hut and started started going, and then this turned into what ended up being my you know super janky base your super janky base what i love about your your uh creations is that there's some like they're almost like a hack like a like a super hack to get from point a to point b but i also like that there's a certain amount of automation to them like like you've got this okay so this this monstrous this monstrosity of of water wheels which didn't come in online until much later <laughs> in the game but this had a purpose of generating energy without having to create a whole novel system like some other players have had to do. And that's what I think makes your stuff so ingenious. So, my goodness, I I've, I've, I've missed out on a lot of upgrades here. Um, what were your first days like? Did you just diggy, diggy, dig a hole straight down? Or did you find some really cool materials? I think Kyer said that he came across a bunch of emeralds that was the jealousy of the server for a week or so. What was it like for you? Um, I know I didn't do what I did our first two servers, which was just spend the first chunk of time doing a ton of mining. I, I know I didn't do that. I did. I kind of did a, a little bit of the quest book stuff and I didn't focus just on science. I did like a like a combination of the, you know, the electric science stuff and and all the magics. In fact, I might have done a little bit more of the magics oh my than gosh. the science. Yeah, Which, you're getting ready to do something epic here. Holy cows. <laughs> no, this is mostly just <laughs> storage <laughs> stuff okay, at this enough. point. Um, but yeah, so I'd say like early on, I, I, I think I was I was I was more progressed in magic than I was science. And magic definitely had a hedge to have like Batania to as like a basis for everything. Yeah. So um, did you like the quest book? I, I did to get me started because I, I really had no idea that there was so many gated things with uh, whatever is called hard mode or expert mode. This expert mode, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's it definitely makes you do progression. You can't like skip straight to, you know, draconic stuff if you wanted mm -hmm. to. You need to you need to progress, and it's like you need to explore through all the different mod packs to do so. So like. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have normally done anything in witchery or blood magic, but both of those are needed to get up higher, right? So talking about that progression, what was it like? What's the TLDR progression that you went through? You said you started with a little bit of electric, a little bit of a Tanya. How did it go from mm -hmm. there? Um, uh, I don't know, to be honest. I, like, I remember, I remember doing a lot of flip-flopping and I was like doing hardcore doing magic stuff and then hardcore doing um, like electric stuff. And at, at, and at some point I felt like I was getting behind on some automation and that's where I maybe focused a little bit more on electricity generation mm -hmm. and at minimum having machines to do some, some shortcuts. 
since there certainly are integrations between even like Batania and like you need to have steel bars to do anything effective in Batania. So that's right. To, ha- to mass produce steel that like I need I need to go down the science route. Well, give me a look. What did it, what was the science route looking like? We've taken a peek at that Batania stuff. We can come back there later. Yeah, but yeah. I see this so nuclear the, reactor just hanging out in the air. Tell me about this section of your base. Yeah, so the the I knew I was also kind of keeping an eye on Endgame too. So I like I looking at some of the creative things. I was thinking, oh my gosh, iridium is going to be a limiting factor. So I was thinking, what are the what are the things that can get to iridium? Mm-hmm. And I, f- I, I figured energy is going to be one of the things that can get there. And I like, kind of had my eye on doing a mining laser, which this nuclear reactor was kind of the, the thing that I worked on after the water wheels. The water wheels were there mostly just to get all of my machines working. So like all of my, you know, any type of machine that I wanted to use, I could use the water wheel to, to power these. And in fact, I think they still are. I think if I needed to, I can power them elsewhere, but the um the the reactor which it's funny because i had already deconstructed it but i started to create one of those like cases around it that's right yeah because that 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 stone that reinforced stone is such a pain to make yeah yep yep so there's a lot going on here a lot of tubes went wrapped around very efficient use of space how do you navigate this mess from the outside i can't I can't see a way in. So this is my this is my semi automation. So it, basically, what I what I need to do is so down in this little uh, uh, drawer down here, I can toss in all of my uranium. Yep. It's like so. It's like I toss uranium in there. It's not automated. I actually have to toss it in there, and then I can toss um, all of my fuel rods, my empty fuel rods up on this top drawer here. Okay. And then over here, I can toss all my copper and I think, it, was it aluminum or steel plates? Whatever sure. the plates are. Yeah. And and then they auto craft. Everything kind of flows through these machines here. And then all of my leftover or, or spent uranium tubes Mm-hmm. Um, flow in here and get deconstructed as well. So it's not quite automated as much as it's like semi-automated. I gotta, I gotta put in stacks of uranium. I gotta put in, you know, empty fuel rods. I gotta put in plates. Gotcha. But if I put in enough stacks of them, like I can have this puppy running for weeks at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And you did have one of the first reactors on the server. I think Durham had the very first, and you were right behind him. Yeah. So I all this stuff worked out. Days even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this stuff really worked out quite well. Um, I see you got some inscribers, but I don't recall you ever getting into AE2. Is that something that you think you'd like to get into on the next mod pack, or is it still too much of a bear? Uh, I don't know. I d- there's so much of it that I don't know about it that it's like the whole uh, auto crafting and matter to energy storage. That's all. Uh, completely foreign to me and mm-hmm. i did i it's almost um it's like learning a whole different yeah oh i totally get it and this mod pack so was, the, go ahead yeah the, the only reason i have the inscribers is to help with progression in other places very cool all right so show off some of the other things that you're interested in or or you thought were really cool that sure. you to... so i don't know if you noticed i had so the the oh, i can suppose i can turn my chunks on so i can see the chunk chunk borders but like so i have two chunks that are the auto uh generated or auto loaded chunks and they they overlap on this base here and so originally i was thinking oh i'm gonna create an up and down base and i'm gonna uh i'm going to dig down and my base is gonna be down it's just gonna auto load these chunks so um what i ended up doing is creating well this is this is my flight way to get down here I like a halfway down point this was a dugout space this ends up being my holding pen for uh the one uh quarry that i had pulled together in the mining dimension so i and i had just ran it long enough to get what i needed and i've i've not needed more materials since so you only like, ran one of draconic you only ran a single quarry and that was it but it was a huge space in the mining dimension. So yeah. 
Um, and you can see, like, I, it's not like I've up, I have upgraded some of these drawers, but not a ton of them. And it basically, those pipes in the back just flow through. It's like, f go from one drawer to the next, to the That's next, great. to the next. So Did you end up having I, slow down at all because of how large your... Let's see here. Yeah, so that at some point, the, some of these drawers are duplicated. So, like, I have... You know, and and I would I would get into mining dungeons too, so it's like I'd have a drawer full of fence posts or something like that. So eventually, yes, I would have slow down, and that's what this chest at the end was for, is for overflow. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think right now it's powered up or anything. So I still see your uh, your ender chest is filled with goodies to be stashed no. away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and theoretically, if they had a space to go, they would they yep. would go to that yep. space. So. Very but cool. yeah, this, so the only thing I ever ran out of was Draconic, but the um, the intent was I wanted to like hollow this space out, and this was going to be like a usable space for like base, um, oh, which okay. also was the intent for farther down here. And the reason I have these clouds uh, farther oh, down the so hole you don't die. was well, at the time I think I was offering Oblivion to come over here and use stuff too, so. This was his way to get in, and then to get back. There's one one of these tunnels, tunnels up to his base. So oh, I see this like water elevator up to locks. So you have yeah. A... So this was before I had flight. This was how I'd get up and down. Oh, you so use a sign. That's ingenious. Yeah, yeah. It was just a re it was just a reminder for myself, and then I think I put the sign there to, for Oblivion to know because he didn't have flight, so he could go up and down, and grab, yeah. grab things. What did you think about having... Okay, so this is the expert pack. I know you played Infinity Evolved. What did you think about mm. having constraints on flight, uh, constraints on resources, not being able to get to the end super fast? What was your impression about that? I liked it. it was, that was my favorite thing about the mod pack. So going to the, you know, whatever, top three favorite things. I liked that, that it was progression required you to have to go through gates. Very cool. Very cool. And that it was slow and that you couldn't just jump ahead and do... I mean, it. in essence, if you're brand new to the mod pack in general, it's it's like it wouldn't allow you to say, oh, I wanted just to explore this one mod in the mod pack. You'd kind of have to explore all the mods. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be a little frustrating, I could see. But yeah. I, because I had done this mod pack before, then it wasn't... Right. I actually really liked it. Excellent. Well, I'm glad we did that. All right, so what's next? So this was this was an intention that I obviously never got around to, but I gotta figure out how to get back up. Uh, close. We'll try to shoot the hole here. Yeah, <laughs> I made it. All right, cool. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what? I'll go up. I'll go up my water elevator. That's a for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Does the water elevator deposit you inside your base? Just on the outside of my water wheels. Okay, okay. In fact, that is a it's right on the edge of a chunk and it was naturally there. Oh, that's I think I think I remember you mentioning something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which uh so there was like a hole that went all the way down gotcha, and I was gotcha. like, Oh yeah, I can use this. Um so I would say one of my early um like I knew I had draconic insight too and like and I obviously was like working on a bunch of magic stuff. And I think early on I was pretty advanced with Batania, but I don't think I, I got any further with it significantly than what I like super advanced with early. Mm -hmm. So this, this is just kind of like enough to get by. I did some blood magic. I ended up kind of liking blood magic, but in order to do blood magic, I also did uh, some of the witchery. witchery stuff, which then I think I have a, and a little bit of thumbcraft too, little, not as much. Yeah. yeah, and it was I was doing a lot of manualized thumbcraft, so this is my little witchery station gotcha. here. So it's just kind of hidden away. Um, but I was doing blood magic over here, which is I used your blood magic quite a bit. Maybe I not think your Kyra did too. Stuff. And then Kyra, I think Kyra used my Batania fight quite a bit early on mm -hmm. too. Um, but then this was also a project that it, like I eventually had like longer term plans with. I obviously don't have. I think this can be one more tier. Yes, two. that's true. I want to be able to do that. Um, but it's it just feed. It's constantly feeding the altar with blood by killing all those. And notice how they're wither skellies, not regular skellies out here. 
Yeah, so how did you get Wither Skellies to spawn? This was... I, I pulled some uh, spawners from the Nether using some early Draconic mod stuff. Yep. And and just pulled them over here. And I, I wasn't knowing exactly what to expect, whether they're going to spawn Wither Skellies or regular Skellies, but sure enough, they spawned Wither Skellies outside of the Wither. So I can't tell um, you how many times I used your... Um, yeah, you know. You were playing, and you'd hear all these massive explosions while I was killing things in your Wither Cage. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. I forgot about my Wither Cage underneath my... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too. Um. Which, oddly enough, it, it, the way I built it, it didn't fully need to be built that way, too, I think. It was just almost overkill. It was manual, but it was overkill. Well, I mean, when you have so much at risk, you know, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, what's next? Um, so, as long as we're here, let's go up. This was something that I did later. I don't know that I've ever been aware of this part. Uh, I, th I think you've seen this, maybe. Um, so this is again semi automation. Um, I had a, I had these chunks loaded oh. with, uh, with a chunk loader, so it was something that I could at least use. So uh, I've seen you build this before, to. but I, yes. but I had not. I was not aware that you had made this here. Yeah. So this is the the semi automated uh, Nether farm. I don't even know if I have. What do I need to do to get this started again? Do I have even stuff in here? I got a bunch of heads. And you're using an expensive tesseract to move all your items too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the energy. Okay, and. that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. So theoretically, do I just hit this button? I don't even remember. Yep, there we go. All right. Just gonna just spawn a bunch of withers. I'm I'll gonna turn, turn it off. It'll be, it'll, <laughs> I oh, just... you know what? I don't. Even, I don't have my grinder. That's funny. They're just gonna hang out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're dying. They're dying. Are they? Is the grinder there? Oh shoot! Never mind. Yeah, nope, it's the mob grinders there. there. It's just no power. No, no, no. Like, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Funny. Oh, no. Oh, one of the skulls is I... getting out of there. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he did, he... did he fall down? No. I have no idea. No, 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 okay. A... All right. Anyway, those guys can hang out there. But that that's so that was my uh, eventually semi-automated nether stars. Yeah. Um, and that was, I obviously I just got way more than I ever needed just by turning that on by a couple of minutes. So again, even though it wasn't automation, it was semi-automation, mm -hmm. but it was overkill for what I needed. Yeah. Um, but here, let's go over this way. Cause this is one of my early projects. This was, so after I know I had leveraged, um, we had that community nether hub yep. for a long time and I, and I definitely needed blaze to get my Batania going. And at some point, I was just like, all right, I need to make my own nether hub. So this, so this was, I started with something smaller, and, and then it turned out to be what I'll show you, which ended up also being something to satisfy my need for draconic mod stuff. Oh, yeah, I suppose there's going to be a bunch of random these guys here. Okay. Stuff, stuff gets out of my my area that they're supposed to be going into every once in a while. It's, it's always the I small saw this thing too. from the outside. I've never seen this from the inside. So I would like, yeah, if you could tell yeah, me yeah. how this works. Sure. So you hear spiders everywhere. So, okay, let's go up in here and take a look in here. In fact, do I have a light? Oh, look at this because I'm out of power. This is, oh my gosh, there's so many dudes in there. Uh, let's kill these dudes. I'm afraid of shooting because I don't want to kill anybody. No, that's all right. It's, they're just too many spiders. So I have my, again, semi-automated grinder thing. It's a charged wyvern sword that goes into an autonomous activator. Mm -hmm. And then when it runs out of power, it spits it out and charges it up again. And then and then repeats all over. And I got a ton of spawners in there. Some of them are charged spawners. Some of them are draconic spawners. Um, I think. It, and then I have cursed earth in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this has kind of evolved over time. But for the most part, it's just been a way to get a combination of materials, mob souls, which is why it's a draconic sword in there. Yeah, so yeah. I have the the enchant, the reaper enchant, to get souls out of it. Right. 
Um, and then early on, I was also spawning, I think, Blaze in there. Okay. Um, and I think early on, too, I was also making sure I had something that was beheading in there so I could get Wither, uh, wither Skeleton Skulls. Right. So this was an early way to get Wither Skeleton Skulls for uh, to get Nether Stars eventually there, gotcha. too. And you picked so you is... picked inside the Nether because it was pro- it probably came before your your blood altar where you were yes to, yeah yes that was the way this was this was one of the first kind of projects that I did beyond that was like an automated thing beyond just having like machines and everything kind of manually using machines and so tell magic me why stuff that I did. tell me why there's scrap in here. You are actually was, recycling your. Oh, that's pretty creative. Your byproducts. Yes, there's, there's a ton of byproducts that I'm recycling. That which is this was early on when I knew that eventually I wanted to get into creating iridium. Again, I had my eye on Endgame and like iridium being a, a barrier. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, okay, I knew I'm gonna want scrap. Yep. What I never got around to do, and one of the reasons why I have, you can see in this middle drawer here. The gas have, soul, uh, gas souls. I love that animation. By the way, <laughs> it's, it spans across a bunch of different drawers. Yeah. So I, I got a bunch of different mob souls that oh, I'm hovering over the gas souls. Whatever, twenty four hundred mob mm-hmm. souls. Yeah. Of, of gas. Uh, I wanted to eventually take a stack of these and, like, right, let's let's uh, make Oblivion's house into a haunted house. Well, yeah. So not necessarily Oblivion's house, but you know. For for the kiddos that I was the you know nasty blood <laughs> demon guy, I wanted to eventually roll up on them and so like just kind of go to town on ghasts everywhere, which I'm just what I'll do out here just outside the. That's fun. That's I'm just fun. gonna. How do I do this? Do I left click or right click? I think you have to right click on the ground. Look at you, dude. Oh, this is so funny watching you. Oh no, I can't. It should just be a right Q, click on it? the ground. There you go. Oh, it is Q. Just Q everywhere. No, that's a soul. Those are souls. Oh, those are souls. Oh, that is funny <laughs> though. That is funny though. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That is uh, so huge. It's not left click on the ground. It's not. Could right you imagine if you, if you made a trap in your base where it just set those on the ground, just the item themselves? Yeah. When somebody walked in and they would just freak out. So anyway, I wanted to have some fun with the mob souls. I never got around to doing that. Sure. Um, but that was, I obviously have way more mob souls than I would ever use too with the Dracon- Draconic mod. Yes. So this was a little bit of a like way overkill. And then obviously it didn't work out by keeping all the mobs in there. Cause I obviously have the little spiders that are escaping. They, sure. And what's happening is that they're, they're big spiders and then they get ground up into little spiders and then the little spiders escape. Or the little spiders explode outside of my pen. That's what it is. Gotcha. Huh, that's cool. Anyway, anyway, we can go back, I suppose. Sure. I like how you spruce up the place, too. It's not just cobblestone, everything. Sure. And that's something that I've notoriously, like, done with my builds, is they've just been uh, utilitarian builds. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I did a little bit more. They're kind of still janky they're they're fun, nice looking builds, but still a little janky. Like my house is kind of half cobblestone, half janky. Sure. Sure. Um, I was let's see over here. I was starting to do near my blood altar. Was starting to do some um, some circle magic. I ne- didn't get nearly as far as Kyra did. Did you spend? Did you end up spending more time outside of this glass building than inside of it? Glass building the. Oh, the the main house here. Yeah. Early on, this was like I did the this build early on, like shortly after I made my hut, and in fact, underneath this, I have an extensive orberry farm. Oh, which is wonderful! Feeding, which is feeding these drawers here. So this was like super early stuff. And um, you've made two thousand blocks of tin off of it. That's incredible. Yeah, that's insane. And and then eventually, I got like underneath here too. I have XP farm stuff and uh like 
I was doing some enchanting stuff underneath here, and I obviously eventually got into Bibliocraft, which was super gated, surprisingly enough, yes. in this mod pack. And, and I think you did that to duplicate books, but then it was so gated that you ended up doing your enchantments in this mana enchanter. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I did Bibliocraft to eventually do the Reaper enchant to, to where I wanted, but I was duplicating books with the mana enchanter. That was that was kind of... Yeah, I never figured that one out, although you, you definitely invited me to to do so several times yeah but yeah so this is just generally i have like you know a little bit of witchery a little bit of thomcraft a little you know a little bit of so you set up your um guide. you set up your quarry you got all the materials you needed to and then one day you set up you were like you know i've got this pet project i want to make a mining laser yes tell me about the inspiration for this super complex of futuristic blocks which looks just majestic Sure. So I needed power, and I first started with the the reactor power that we saw, saw down below. And by the way, when you're up high here, you notice the nice painting in the water down below? Yes. <laughs> he was, just added was, to it today, and he was having as much was, fun. Yes, Kaya riding around on his broom. That's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. And he was with my, the, my, my favorite thing of all this was he was... Uh, Semi AFK off comms on the phone while he was doing it. <laughs> motherfucker and like and I'm like yelling at him in game I'm like fuck stop stop <laughs> it's like running circles around Republic Fleet right yeah exactly Just... and that's exactly what he's doing he was running circles around Republic Fleet in the water underneath my yeah, face freezing everything yeah we well, got extra so, ice today so let's let's go in on the hole on the bottom here so I have this this little hole is kind of a temporary entry and i obviously never got this doing what i wanted to do this was my mining death star and i needed power in order to run the mining laser so it really started with the bottom stuff down below here and i was really feeding the mining laser with with fern how dare you fern is uh lox puppy who's chewing on stuff i'm sure uh while he's afk there's um one of the cool things about the mining laser in this mod pack is that it generates anything. I think it's anything in the ore dictionary. And so you get materials that aren't normally in the game. You get the, yeah. you get, you also get the nether rack. Um, and if you take these, these, uh, nether materials, some of them are like nether pig iron, I think, and it'll turn straight into steel, which is really nice. Yep. Yeah. There's a, so there's there. a, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that I hardly did anything with. And there's even other things that I just for like the, what I don't even remember. There's like uh, here you go, Mal malachite or malachite, whatever yeah. that is. I don't even know what that is. Right. There's a there's another ore that's like uh, I don't even remember what it says. Peridot. Uh, yeah. Sapphire. There's but, some that are you know the other thing too is some of them get unified in in the ore dictionary too. Mm -hmm. And then I think there's one thing that there's like a slime type of ore too yeah. that I, like I even did research and I couldn't even find out what it would use what it would be used for. It was just it's like, from the mining dimension and it's literally just making slime. It's from okay. it's specifically from that <laughs> mining dimension. Yeah. Uh, one, so anyway, one one block of note in here is the is something called firestone, which I don't see. And I will just say that if you make firestone, here it is, firestone ore. If you hold that out and you walk through your beautiful forest, it will set the whole world on fire. So be careful no with that way. when you pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My beautiful forests and my first server just got demolished. So, okay, go on. So, so I, and I don't remember how many chargers. I may have only started with one charger at the beginning for the mining laser. It was just to get it started so I could get iridium. And, like, so this actually ends up only making the iridium bars, which are part of end game. But it's more the iridium ore that you need. So, like, I, you know, early on, I was like, oh, I thought this was going to be the answer to all of my iridium. Well, it was really going to be the answer to half of my iridium. Yeah. Um, and I, like, this is running right now. It is, I don't even think it's spitting anything anywhere. Actually, it might not be running if I'm not powered up. Yeah, I don't think I'm powered up. And it, so, like, it's... it. This generated more than I would have ever needed from a quarry. And so, like, after running the first quarry, with the exception of Draconic, this doesn't, this doesn't generate Draconic ore. Um, this was gonna, this was gonna be all of my needs for anything. And in fact, I got so much emerald from this, I started building with emerald, and we'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. All too. right, sure. And so, um, I think you had, you said that you kind of bit off more than you needed with this big reactor. The big reactor produced so much oh, power totally. that you just, you kind of like chopped off pieces, and you only went with just a little bit, right? 
So the the middle reactor part, which is the what do they call it? It's not the core. It's not an active know. reactor. It's a passive. passive reactor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the middle part, the passive reactor, um, is exactly what it turns out to be. I wanted it to be, which is has enough capacity to make steam to power three, excuse me, four big reactors at their max capacity. Turbi- these see turbines, here, right? These turbines, yeah. yeah. So, in fact, I might even be able to turn one of these turbines on. These things are super cool. You used um, Ludicrite, which you needed by you needed to run the reactor for a while to do that, right? Oh, yeah. Actually, I can't power the turbine because I am out of, yeah, I'm out of... Yellorium or... Uh, Yellorite and plutonium and all that other stuff, yeah, gotcha. so... Um, but anyway, so it's, yeah, it's, uh, this is me not playing for months. <laughs> yeah, months, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, like, the passive reactor would create enough steam to basically do double the, the, the RF output that I was kicking out. I think each of these turbines kicks out, like, 28,000 RF per tick or something like that. Yeah, an so, obscene number. So this is, you know, about 50,000 RF per tick that I'm making right now. This had the capacity, if I were to, you know, make two more of these turbines, which I had the materials for down below, um, to basically have 100,000 RF per tick, which is just insane. It's more than I I would have needed, unless I wanted to, like, fully automate some huge projects. So, right. Um, but what I was using this power for was to create, uh, again, iridium. Or I had my eye on iridium, so... I'm looking at this oak drawer. 4,000 pieces of iridium is not shabby. Pieces of iridium. And uh, so I was kind of making it at about max capacity for one mass fabricator. Mm -hmm. Um, Which obviously then if I would have doubled my energy output, I probably could have made more mass fabricators and more machines and Mm -hmm. more, you know, more. uh, What's amazing to me, though, is that you're doing this by... Okay, so uh, you're doing this by powering your EU machines with RF. Yes. And uh, that, which is these wire uh, HV wire connectors. And these HV wire connectors, they only transmit. That's a it's a four to one ratio, four it's RF to limited, one EU. Yeah. So this only transmits a thousand RF per tick. And these machines, these can just gobble up an obscene amount oh, yeah. of. I think yep. it's an I think it's an, an a scalable amount. You can almost get infinite. Yeah, wow, quite Im- quite impressive. And what are these here? These igneous extruders. This was powering your recyclers up here, right? Oh, yes. I see. Okay. So I was making cobble Lots to 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 make scrap, and yeah. then the scrap was all piping into the recycler. Excellent. Any other big uh, big projects here? Yeah. So let's see. You At said some something point... about emeralds, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll have one. I got one more project, and then I'll show you the mining dimension with the emeralds. But I'll do the. Fair enough. Let's go over the northwest. I think is where I made this. Um, at some point, wood became a limiting factor, and again, I I bit off a little bit more than I could. I remember the, the first wood the... farm that I saw. Oh my, Lanta! What is this? Really, bro? <laughs> well, and this, this ended up being good for what I wanted to do later as well. Cause, so this is this was my <laughs> supply, my supply for soul sand for the semi-automated wither uh, star farm. Um, because I um, sludge, sludge. I'm I'm using I'm taking sludge. I have to say, basically, I have an infinite amount of of wood from this. This is um, an. I'm using the sprinklers to increase the the tick of the growth rate. I am actually upset that I have that I gave C Gamer a, such a hard time for making a sprinkler system of of an eighth of the size that you have made here. <laughs> oh my god! That was for something probably more valuable. That was that was wasn't that for? Um, that was for uh, XP berries and uh, Ender pearls. But yeah. Yeah, and I I also have an Ender pearl farm underneath my base too, which is also like where my steel semi-automation is yeah as well too, what so. an interesting biome this this uh ominous woods yeah it's right on the edge of this yeah. uh dead wood area yeah yeah <laughs> so I... so this ends up being like obviously one it was i was running out of wood for random stuff it was like drawers and drawer upgrades and things like that mm-hmm. i'm just like all right so i need some wood 
So this was a, a much bigger project than I needed it to be. Um, but it also ended up creating soul sand and clay. Clay was also a limiting factor yes. for some of the uh, magic stuff. Yes. So it's like, oh, this is great. And now I have an infinite supply of clay and I have an instant infinite supply of soul sand. And then, oh, sand also. Uh, hard to find sand biomes as well. So yes, when it comes we only to found one for things. Yes, we only yeah. found one desert biome in the whole server. So this ended up being more than just my need for wood. This was like clay, soul sand, sand, and then apples uh, eventually. And I'll show you where the apples come into play too. Sure. Um, but so this so this ends up kicking items into tesseract, and I can you know toss the, you know pull stuff out as needed too. Excellent. Um, but let's go then back to the mining dimension, which. I can find my base. So, did you ever use C Gamers Mining Dimension Portal, or did you always use your own? No, it was always mine. I think, in fact, I, I think I, I'm not sure. I I know I made mine pretty early. Yep. Um, and and the, like I think you had may have had the first quarry. I don't remember who had the first quarry. C Gamer had the first quarry. Okay, and the, and he may have made his in the mining dimension. That was what I that was what I did, as I only made mine in the mining dimension. Mm -hmm. So, I ran um, two massive quarries in the mining dimension and one double one in massive the in the nether yeah yeah yep. so i'm in the mining dimension here oh, okay uh, oh me... what's this in fact uh, for some reason i feel like i was doing or is this you is this you the subsidian here uh this is this is me i did okay, this okay, okay this was i was doing manually making draconic hearts i had to do space. yeah the most that second most annoying thing on the server is manually doing hundreds of hearts. Oddly enough, like the probably an early on biggest barrier for me was like uh, getting obsidian, getting to mine obsidian. Yeah, like yep. Tinker's construct and all that stuff was couldn't make alamite. The er the earliest barrier for me mm -hmm. so this is uh i don't know i'll call it a work in progress I'd, i've iterated a bunch and tore it up and then it went, exploded once and i was playing around with stuff but so if it was working this would feed this was my my start of the four and rf tools matter um, beamer yes so this this is if i were to turn these on it would feed one of them would feed apples. One of them would feed endstone. I don't even remember what the other one feeds. Oh, the other one feeds XP bottles, which I just pulled a, like a bunch of stacks of XP bottles. And it beams the matter into, and I have, I'm missing my piece here, so I don't even know where I put this. This is, I think I had my mob grinder here. What did I even have? I don't even remember. So this spawner will spawn, it's set to spawn end dragons. So the the syringe really? that's the spawner spawns end dragons, and if you so if you like left click, right click on yeah, the I see spawner, that mob dragon the syringe there, and you need one tenth of a bottle of XP and two hundred <laughs> blocks of uh and and two hundred leaves, it, it's two hundred any organic material, and that's where I was like, oh, organic material, I have a shit ton of apples, so that's where the apples come into play. So the apples from the tree farm feed this. Um, I had so, some enhancements that I wanted to make to be able to like harness the end dragons and just kill them. But what I was, what I ended up doing in the in the meantime was just spawning them and manually killing them. And they couldn't get is, out of here. They could, and that's why I wanted to like. There was a better way to harness them than what I obviously built this with uh, emerald blocks, which is back to my point of having a shit ton of emeralds that I gotcha. didn't know what to what to do with it at some point that so. is so cool man i never would have in a million years i never would have spawned him but in there's this way some, but there's some thongcraft stuff that i wanted to get into that can harness mobs and just pull them in and like yes and the uh corporal attractor yeah so i was going to use that stuff to to pull them in and then have the grinder just grind them up and then i would have i uh, had automated hearts so or at least semi-automated i could like you know, flick the switch, yes. flick the switch off if I needed to. I had point, to kill had hundreds of dragons. I don't have it on the map here, but uh, you'll see it in the stream, I think. Or you'll see it in the on my own, yeah, my own yeah. tour. Yeah, this is really cool, man. Again, innovating like a crazy man. But this was just one piece of many things I wanted to do with RF tools. I was starting to, 
you know, play around with. I think you were creating some of the, uh, doing some of the dimension stuff. Yep. I had created some of those, uh, uh, some of those machines, but never actually did anything with them. Gotcha. And then this was roughly the area where I had my one really huge quarry too. I think I even have stuff still sitting. I still see. Yeah, that was another goofy thing that I had to deal with is whenever the uh, end dragons would die, they would uh, create this little hole here. So I was trying to right trying to figure out a way to make sure I wanted the holes to go in one spot, and I would have had to have a hole on the bottom of here, and then that would have had made me have to re position the unit that i was gonna yep. have to collect all the hearts and stuff so there's mm-hmm. a, you know there's some more stuff that i need to do to automate this very cool oh yeah here's my quarry stuff right here yeah very cool what was the last project that you worked on uh this was probably the last project i was actively working on um to get hearts i, I you saw that i'm wearing the wyvern stuff yep. i wanted to up I, I was pretty much ready to upgrade uh, everything to the draconic stuff that you're wearing um, and upgrade tools and things like that too. Um, in fact, I had the draconium for it. In fact, if we went back to my base, you'd probably see chests full of draconium. <laughs> right, right. But you got to convert all those hearts and then do all that micro crafting. So and you yep. never made, you never made applied energistics. So you did a hundred percent of the micro crafting that you needed to do. You did by hand. I did. Damn. Did you just batch craft everything in order to get by some of that painful? Um, yeah, I mean, I made I made stuff in bulk, and and it, like obviously when with some of the semi automated projects that I had, I just had more than I needed of anything. So if I if I needed to, you know, I'm trying to think of probably the most painful thing that I crafted was the galgarian block or whatever Galga- was... yes galgadorian metal that was the first thing yeah. that i automated in uh in in a flight interesting sure sure everything else was very manageable i think like i even got to the point of probably the most massive micro crafting thing that i did had to do uh with um uh it was one of the creative things. I don't. Re- I don't remember if it was the, um, the ring, the angel ring. I was gonna say it looks like you're wearing the angel ring, and I just was showing yeah. that that recipe is pretty intense. And so there's. I mean, there's a fair amount of micro crafting when it comes to the, like the solar cells and stuff in there. That was probably the most painful, which wasn't super bad because I just had a, a shit ton of resources. So I just mass batch craft a bunch of things Mm -hmm. excellent so let's get back to your base here hold on don't move anywhere i want to show you something cool okay get on the ground and hold shift oh can that take us that's funny i accidentally tried punching ace with it one time when he was crouched and i discovered a new thing all right yeah so any last additions to the projects that you went through? You went through the whole progression. You went from humble origins to cutting down your own trees to microcrafting everything by hand. You had uh, one second here. You had um, you had the enormous tree farm with the million sprinklers. Uh, everything was super compact, very utilitarian still, but also adding some an additional layer of style this time around. I really like the innovation that mm-hmm. you did with the drawers and getting into IC two. Never made any complaints. You were super innovative, super self-reliant. It was excellent. You were open to letting people use your materials and things like that. What was uh, what was you said? You said before that one of your favorite things about the server was how the things were gated. Pick mm-hmm. maybe maybe think of two more things that you thought about this mod pack or maybe this server in general that you really enjoyed. Um, I I liked that early on there was a little bit more collaborative effort just in general with the uh, with the folks on the server too like the like i think for the most part people were like hey you want this come over use these machines um that 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 in itself though is a little bit of a double edged sword when it's this difficult of a mod pack too cuz if you don't have the progression yourself then eventually you're going to need eventually you'll need your own progression to do that if you wanted to do branch off and do something specific so um yeah, I but yeah, I liked, that, yeah, I liked early on, like, Derm had a bunch of machines, I think, that everyone was using. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had, uh, I, 
I wouldn't do a ton with the hub, I guess. But I think for the most part, like people were sharing things and mm -hmm. sharing materials. I remember making a big um, trade with you for some Terra steel, I think perhaps it was, or something along those lines. Maybe it was, maybe it was. Oh yeah. Mox. Terra steel for void metal or something That's like that. That's right. Yep. Cause yep. I had made void progress with the bees. And, yep. 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 Any, uh, any other features, uh, maybe of the mod pack itself that you thought were great or you'd like to see? Oh gosh, improvements to the mod pack or things that I liked. Um, I mean, I did like that it the mod pack in general made you at least in expert mode or hard mode or whatever it's called. It would it suggested that you explore a ton of the mods. Mm -hmm. Whereas the last time we did this mod pack, I just kind of focused on a handful of mods because mm -hmm. I was also learning mod of Minecraft. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think. Uh, there wasn't a t like it it the way the quest pack worked and the and the integration work it all you really needed to do was scratch the surface on some of the mods yeah so like it you know AE two I think was one of those right that the, applied it energistic right. or whatever yes um like so all, all I really needed to do was do inscribers for the most part gotcha. and and then like be able to stamp out my own patterns that's all. I needed to do right whereas obviously there is a ton in that mod pack just in general right right <laughs> yeah yeah very cool okay so a couple things that you'd like to see differently if you were to imagine that you would ever play mod minecraft again i would want more active players on the server with more collaborative uh like community effort in fact i wouldn't even mind if everything was all just one community effort <laughs> yeah, very cool. Any other suggestions? I am, uh, and you know, like I'm considering the next the next effort is, uh, if by my choice, anyways, is likely going to be a mod pack called Enigmatica Two, on okay. my, on Minecraft One Point Twelve Point Two. Okay. You get dual wielding, and there's a lot of more animals and stuff with sure, the base sure. game, and and uh, the mod pack is actually even more quest oriented than this last one was. Apparently, it flows very nicely in its okay. progression. Um, Kyer echoed also sentiments about having more community efforts, having a more yep. central hub, which I think is a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, any other features then, lastly, before we head out of here? No, that's about it. All right, man. Well, hey, it's been a total blast again. I'm glad yeah, that you guys great. got to enjoy it. I would love to recruit a couple more people, too. We're going to have to get our Twitch followers uh, in on this all, right? Yeah. <laughs> Build a community on Twitch. Maybe we'll have a few more knocking around next time. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your time tonight. And uh, any last messages before I shut off the recording? I just like to say, <laughs> Welcome to the Rusty Tub! Welcome to the Rusty Tub! <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>